Hello again everyone. In previous tutorial we saw how to create a chat room for our chat application. Now it's time to dig into the room itself and make conversation available to the users. So first let's create this chat room class. Override the default on create method. Then don't forget to register the activity into the manifest file. Ok, so go back to activity. In order to set the layout for this activity, we use the setContentView method. Now create this new layout and choose the relative layout for its root. We will build almost the same UI as it is in main activity. So we will need the button that will be used for sending messages. Then there is an edit text in which the user types a desired message. And finally for the chat conversation we can use a simple text view. But before adding text view let's first insert a scroll view so that the user can scroll up and down through the messages. And now just insert the text view inside of the scroll view. Alright. Let's go to the activity and reference all these views using the findViewById method. As you remember from the previous tutorial, when the chat room activity is called, it also receives additional information, which is the name of the active user and the name of the selected chat room. So let's create two variables to store these values. We can extract these values with the intent that has started this activity. So use the getIntent method, then get extras, and finally get, and also provide the key that you typed before. It is nice to see in which chat room we are currently, so we can, for an example, override the title in the action bar with the room name. Okay. Next create the click listener for the button. In the onClick method we will write code that will append our chat room with the user message. In order to add children inside of the chat room, we first must reference the room itself. In order to reference the room, create a new database reference object. To get the reference to the active chat room, we use the following methods method get reference this method only returns first row of our children which are our room names but as soon as it is appended with the child method we are pointing inside of the chat room object itself or put differently chat room becomes root and first level of that chat room can be read here first level are our unique random key identifiers. So first we must create these random keys. To achieve that create a new hash map then call the push and get key method. This method will return an unique key which we can save in this variable. Then to append the chat room with this unique key call the update children method. Okay? The room is now appended with this unique key. And as we already said, in this random key object there is going to be the name of the sender and the actual message. So that means that we must position ourselves inside of the random key object. To accomplish that, create a new database reference object and call again the child method. Inside the method provide the auto-generated key identifier. Ok, so now with this we are inside of the random key object. What is left is to generate two more children, message and the username. Each is made from key and value. So again we need the hash map, create it. Ok, and first we put the name as a key. And for the value we provide the variable in which we saved the username. And for the actual message use the value from the edit text input field. 
Finally, to confirm changes, call the update children method. Now let's do the testing with the emulator. Click on the chat room, let's type something and press the button. Immediately the random key identifier is generated along with two children, which are the message and the name of the user. Notice that the new random key is generated each time we send the message. Ok, now our final task is to see these changes on the Android screen. We use child event listener on our database reference object to listen for data changes. On child edit gets called when app connects with the database for the first time and also when there is a new children edit. And then the second method on child change is called whenever its child has new values, which in our case are username and the message. So we must use both these methods and we can create like a new method and call it in both child edit and child changed. Like in previous tutorial, we get the iterator and we can use it to read the current children. Let's create the new variables in which we save username and message. Then in order to read the value from the currently selected child, we use the getValue method for both variables. First, iterator.next method reads the first child and then the second iterator.next method reads the value of the second child. Finally, to show these red values on the screen, let's append our text view with the append method. That's it. Now let's do some final testing. As you see, we are reading messages from the database. Now let's use one more emulator and see how it looks from other device. Everything is working really nice and it is updated in real time. So thanks for watching guys, see you, bye bye.